Dear chess friends, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited to offer you full repertoire for black against Italian or so-called Gioco Piano. Those who are following my YouTube channel probably familiar with my last video where I covered a very interesting idea, well, kind of like new idea for me against two knights, knight g5, d5, ed5, and move b5 on move 5. Yeah, so instead of very well-known knight a5, bishop b5, c6, and, well, the heavy theoretical line uh, where black sacrifices pawn for initiative, we just play b5. And it seems to me much less information, much less to study here, not less exciting play and overall could be a fantastic surprise. Now, once I publish this uh, and uh, advertise this on my social media accounts, uh, there was one person who suggested on Twitter, his name is David Alexandru, I'm not sure it's a real person, it's a real name, probably yes, uh, seems like very... A very good chess player. So he suggested, how about you check also a new idea in slow Italian after d3, how about you check a new idea with early d5? And once I started to analyze this move, I came to conclusion that it's very interesting. In my opinion, works pretty well for black. And this is how I got this idea to build the full repertoire and, and provide the file with the full coverage of the main lines. So here's the move order and uh, it's Italian. So we'll start from the beginning, Italian, Bishop C4. Nowadays, the most popular opening against E4, E5. I remember how suddenly it's happened that instead of Rui Lopez, that during, uh, during the years when I was an active chess player was by far, by far, white top choice. Suddenly, bishop c4 replaced bishop b5. I think, in my understanding, the main reason was Berlin. And, uh, well, there were start pouring games, like, at the highest level, more and more. And there are so many ideas. And I feel it's, it's still very interesting. It's still every high-level tournament. We can see a lot of games in this line. There are, like, different trends. So, for instance, I would like to mention that, well... Here, of course, bishop c5 is the main move, like the most popular move at the highest level. So here, of course, we have c3, d3 moves. Now, for instance, I would like to mention that the latest trend is to play bishop g5. That I remember when I started to study, it's considered to be, well, it's nothing special. We can do h6, g5. It's not dangerous before the castle. Nowadays, it's a latest trend. Of course, uh, of course, white can go with the normal uh, slow Italian here after bishop c5, c3, knight f6. By the way, d4, ed4, e5, uh, well, pretty trendy. I think uh, leads to quite complicated game. Um, uh, White White has some ideas here, not an easy line. And, uh, of course, uh, the main line here, d3, so-called slow Italian. And here, there are so many ideas. It's like, I don't, I don't know, every high-level tournament, every elite tournament, we have some new development. Suddenly it's like bishop g5, then later it comes knight d2, then black is trying to play queen d5, and so on. It's it's really it's really hard to follow, hard to follow all the developments here. Therefore, I thought it would be a great practical choice if we can avoid all these heavy theoretical lines with black by playing knight f6, by playing knight f6. So as I mentioned... In the beginning, so we have knight g5 covered. We have knight g5 covered with relatively new idea. Well, it's not new idea in theory, but rather new idea because recently in correspondence games, Black actually showed how to play this and how to, to get the playable positions after the critical line bishop f1. So in this file, you'll find this line as well from the previous video. Now, uh, of course, the question remains what happens with d3, slow Italian, so the uh, probably the most popular move objectively. But before we move to d3, uh, it's very important to mention also knight c3, the move which is 
objectively speaking, not dangerous, pretty harmless if you know that uh, this move knight a4. However, at the level, let's say, 1000 and until 1800, I see this knight c3 is quite often, quite often this idea. So here uh, it's very important uh, like, like to clean up all the lines. Of course, uh, the best solution is knight e4, d5, bishop d3. So by the way, this is the only way for white not to get clearly worse right away. And d4, bishop e4, bishop d6. I have a nice coverage here, like check some theory. Uh, overall, black is doing very, very well. Uh, objectively speaking, maybe white has one line, one, two lines where it's uh, pretty balanced, but no problems whatsoever for black. Well established for many years and no changes here, right? Now, that being said, there are some like very, very interesting gambits here that like I would imagine it's not very pleasant if you face them off the, uh, like off the board, like for instance, move castle. So suddenly I realized there is a castle and there are like 867 games in this position. So, and it's actually quite a quite tricky play here. We need to play like move like F6, which is not easy to play. But if you know my file, if you study, uh, if you study black will emerge with better position and material up. Now, uh, so that move knight c3, now also d4, scotch gambit. Um, here I offer e d4, of course, e5, e5 and castle, two main moves. I also checked knight g5, uh, d5 and so on. Again, well established from theoretical point of view, very good line for black. Uh, but, you know, I, I can imagine that not many people like going very deep here and, and they just have maybe two moves, three moves uh, of theory and they don't know in depth. So here, like you, you have a very nice coverage. So here we have castle, first line, of course, uh, again, well established, knight e4, rook e1, d5, like almost every move, there is some gambit. Like here we have some knight c3 move, ridiculous move. But again, it's like, if you know how to react, it's not going to be dangerous for you. Bishop d5, queen d5, knight c3, well-known line, queen d7, knight takes e4, probably the, the best objectively for white, bishop e7, and bishop g5, castle, bishop e7, queen e7, knight d4, bishop d7, uh, and only question here, like, how to play for win with black. I guess it's still, what is important here, it's still playable position, it's possible to go for this position, it's not immediate draw, and that's a good news for black. Uh, that's what usually, at least that was my approach when I faced these sidelines uh, with e4, e5, how to get fighting positions. Now, uh, there is a very serious coverage here with uh, like at least five moves for white covered, uh, very important position. So now here instead of castle, uh, well, I would say probably more challenging e5. Now, a well-known move d5, there is also knight e4, which is pretty good here. Uh, recently played by Levon Aronian in uh, US Championship. d5, bishop b5, knight e4, knight d4, and bishop c5. It's not a big news. It's still bishop d7, of course, well-known top choice for black. But I feel like if bishop c5 working, why not? Why not to play bishop c5? The main line here, bishop e3. Um, now, one of the ideas, important ideas, of course, what's going on here with all the captures on c6. So we take obviously on f2 with check, king f1, bc6, bishop c6, king f8. And the, the point is that we are threatening bishop a6 here in this position and white has to react. White has no time to capture on a8. So queen d3, bishop f5, uh, like very interesting line, the main line where we get uh, some compensation, some interesting compensation here. So that's a ridiculous line. But once again, rook is untouchable in view of bishop b5 check. So e6, otherwise it's clearly better for black. Bishop e6, bishop 8, queen 8 with very, very, very nice compensation. And like, I would definitely uh, rather be on black side here. So there is this line. And um, finally, uh, finally, what is the main line here where uh, white kind of like nowadays trying to fight for advantage in this line. It's bishop e3, castle, knight takes e6, b takes e6, bishop c5, knight c5, bishop takes e6, rook b8. So that this position promises black uh, good compensation, 
queen d5, queen e7, temporary two pawns down, but we have a lot of ideas uh, with rook d8, bishop a6, and of course pawn on b2 is hanging. So the best idea for white to probably give up both pawns, knight f3 is very shaky, but I, I have also coverage knight c3, rook c2, and, and here I have, uh, I, I fully covered this position, uh, there is a recent game uh, played in uh, in Russia by uh, b between uh, Nair and Matlakov, uh, like Russian Championship 2022, like black equalized very, very convincingly, very comfortably. So this line seems to me pretty good. So that's more or less uh, what you are going to see in Scotch Gambit. And finally, finally, the key variation, the key, the most important line that I'm very proud it's move d5. Thanks to the social media, thanks to the Twitter, Twitter message, d5. By the way, I would like to mention that we still have h6 coverage in my um, in my files. You can find this line uh, on my webpage, ask-avruk.com. Uh, matter of taste, h6 followed by g5. Not everyone likes this. Now here we have another approach d5, e5, knight d5. Of course, d7, d5, overall, one of the major strategical ideas for black in Italian. Now, the question is, how we handle our center? So what happens with the pawn on e5, whether black is able to put serious pressure, open up maybe position at some point. So it seems, it seems right now that everything works pretty well for black, at least according to the current theory. Now, uh, who are the players who have been playing this line? First of all, I would like to mention Indian superstar uh, Erigashi. Now we have Russian Grandmaster 26 plus Paravian. Now uh, we have Greek Grandmaster Theodoru. Uh, Adivan played. So one, uh, well, we, we, there are single games of strong players, but those players that I mentioned, they have several games. So I think they. Uh, integrated this line into their repertoire, so they planning to play this uh, on a regular basis. Now, I would like, uh, so I have a full coverage of every possible development here for white that so far happened in theory. Like, I would like to give you here one example. So, for instance, rookie one, which is by far white top choice. Rookie one targets in the pawn on e5, obviously. So, we have to play f6. And uh, so, the main move is c3, but there is also d4. It's you know, if I would see this line for the first time, that would be my first question. What is happening here? Now, knight b6, a key move here, knight b6, uh, with two lines. One line is bishop b3, knight takes d4, e queen d4. Of course, we are we are happy to trade queens uh, because it seems like it will be an issue for us to castle kingside uh, thanks to this powerful bishop. Queen d4, e d4, bishop f4, and bishop f5, bishop c7, king d7. So that's the line. I think there were at least, uh, well, one, two games of Erigashi. I remember for sure there was one game where he was, uh, actually two games for sure, uh, against Demchenko and Van Forest, and he he did pretty well. He did pretty well in those games, so Black seems to me doing fine. And, of course, uh, instead of Bishop B3, we have Bishop B5 move. Bishop B5, uh, pinning, uh, castle, very important. So now, and the, the point is that after bishop c6, bc6, d5, definitely pawn sacrifice. Queen d1, rook d1, bishop g4. It's very interesting compensation for black thanks to the active pieces and, of course, bishop pair. Now, that's basically right now uh, kind of like the critical direction. So my suggestion for easy and I think like pretty reliable repertoire to play early d5. Now, after knight g5, we have b5, and there is a coverage of main sideline, uh, scotch gambit, as well as knight c3. Might be something, I hope it will be some interesting idea for my, uh, like, subscribers, like and hopefully new subscribers. So instead of getting into very, very intense and heavy theoretical developments in bishop c5 so you have this suggestion and i hope you're gonna like it um thanks for joy thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed please subscribe hit the notification button so that you will be notified when i have new videos 
and I'll see you on my next videos. Thanks again.